Hey everybody, Jeremy here, and today I'm gonna be checking out this figure, the Hydra Stomper, Marvel Legends Hydra Stomper, that I found at Target, which is always a nice surprise for me because I don't really have too much luck when it comes to finding figures, especially stuff that I really, really want out in the wild. I usually just have to find it online. Now the reason is I really don't wanna drive all the way around the greater Atlanta area trying to find a figure or two, you know? Gas is expensive. So to my surprise, this Hydra Stomper was showing up at one of the targets that was closest to me. So I wanted to pick them up. So because this is one of the larger Marvel Legends figures, they had a bigger price tag on it. So this is gonna be like 50 bucks, you know? So it's not cheap, but it is heavy. And I wanted to get this because I already acquired and reviewed all of the Marvel Legends What If figures that came with the Builder Figure piece to build the Watcher. So I reviewed all of those one at a time and the Builder Figure. So if you want to see that, check out the description because I'm going to leave links to every single one of those video reviews from this What If line. All right, so. Of course, this one is a standalone, doesn't come with anything aside from the accessories for the Hydra Stomper. So I'm excited. Let's open them up, check them out. I love a big fig. So I wanted to start this review off with this image of Captain Carter hanging on to the back of the Hydra Stomper. And when I first reviewed Agent Carter, I did notice how her hand was open and I thought that it was just for grabbing on to the shield, even though her palm was a little bit too wide and the shield a little bit too thin for her to really grasp it. And I didn't realize that that's not what her hand was for. Her hand is for grabbing on to the back handle of the Hydra Stomper because they had a really close relationship inside of the show because of course Steve Rogers is inside of the Hydra Stomper and they were a team. Uh, they were a duo up until the point when Steve was injured while piloting the Hydra Stomper. So I'm pretty sure other people probably already knew that, but I didn't, but I do like that touch. And I do like how figures of the same wave can come together and connect in ways that are not immediately obvious. So I just kind of like it when they sprinkle things in there like that. So let's take a look at the Hydra Stomper here. Now to its credit, it looks just like it does in the show. And at the same time, it's very utilitarian, very old school military, olive green, not a whole lot of detail going on besides the sort of shaded blue in the eyes and right there on the chest, which is again, accurate for the TV show. But I do think this figure has a lot of potential when it comes to someone who might want to customize it, customize it to make it look a little less straight off the assembly line and a little bit more battle tested. Uh, maybe adding a little bit of black to it, bringing out some of the details in some of this sculpt work that's all around this guy and to really make it pop. I think that there's a lot of different potential there. But what we have here is still an accurate representation of the show and for that, it gets good marks for it. So, because this is a big, this is a bigger figure, um, Hasbro charges 50 bucks for it. Now that's a pretty expensive price for a figure, admittedly, although it's not uncommon. We've seen this before. Um, we're gonna take a look back at the Modoc figure, for example. That was also fifty dollars when it first came out. So that's just kind of how it is with these larger figures. You know, the companies like McFarlane Toys their price point for their bigger figures is also around 50 bucks as well. So it's just kind of what we have to uh, deal with right now. So as far as accessories for the Hydra Stomper, we do get a few. Um, we get a couple pairs of interchangeable hands. You see these are fisted hands right here. And then we also get some effects. We turn it over on the back. You see that he's rocking this jet pack um, that you do have to put together. It's really simple, don't worry about it. And then we have these fire effects, these sort of blasting off effects that you can connect to the jetpack, which is really nice. I love it when they add little visual effects like this. It really helps to bring out the figure. And then as far as the jetpack uh, goes, you can do this. You can fold it in to make it look like that, or you can just bring it back out and spread it out a little bit more, depending on what kind of pose you want the Hydra Stomper to be in. 
So besides that, we just got a big old chunk of plastic that is fairly heavy. You know, he's a pretty weighty figure and that is good. You know, he can he can stand up on his own very well. Um, and also you can kind of get him in like a little tilted pose as well. I'm going to put a little image up on the screen that I took of him and Agent Carter. And as you can see, he sort of leaned forward. And that's because of the articulation that he has in his uh, in his feet here that will allow you to sort of rock him forward a little bit. You know, kind of like Michael Jackson thriller style in a way. So this is just kind of how it look. You see how he's leaning like that and he's in no danger of falling over. So I really do like how sure footed this figure is. So let's go over a little bit of articulation. Uh, one of the coolest points of articulation is in the head. Uh, look how high he can look up like this and then he can look down fairly far as well. Being able to look up so high is really cool, especially if you kind of want to get him in a blasting off pose. He needs to be looking up. So I love that his head goes up as far as that. Taking a look at the arms, we have the shoulder armor here that is very flexible so it doesn't hinder the ability to get his arms up nice and high like that. Um, he's a pretty nimble figure to be so darn big, you know, let me tell you. Oops, sorry about that. Jetpack fell off. Let's put that up there. All right. And well, actually, while we're here, this is what it looks like on the back without the jetpack. So I knocked that loose, but let's keep going over the articulation. So we got that elbow bend there. We can also take the arm. We can uh, bring it over and across the chest. And I mentioned it before in past reviews, but I really do like it when you can take the arms of a figure and bring it all the way across their chest like that. I think that it really makes for some cool uh, dynamic poses. And then as far as the legs go from the side, that's how high you can lift up the legs in the front. It's about as high as you can lift up the legs from the front. And let's do the knee articulation. So it's like a single jointed knee going on here with this uh, really big figure. And the, uh, the knee joint for the left foot on my particular figure, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not frozen, but it's a lot more stiff than it is for the right foot. So um, I'm a little bit worried about trying to bend that one, um, but let's just give it a go. Yeah. <sighs> there we go. So I got that bend going, but it was a little bit tough. Let's bring it back. All right, there we go. And then he can move the legs apart about that far. And then of course, like I mentioned before, you still do have the articulation in the uh, foot that you can bring up and you can kind of bring it back like this just to help you out with some different angles and whatnot. And then of course you got that torso nice and not a clicky swivel to the torso, but a very absolute and sure turn. Like it clicks, but you just can't hear anything. So you can get him in a certain position and you can expect for him to stay there. So lastly, before I wrap this up, I just want to give a little bit of a size comparison between him and Captain Carter, just kind of more or less standing side by side. So you can see how much bigger he is than her. And of course, there's going to be some Marvel Legends figures that are a little bit taller than her, but in general, he is going to tower above all of them, as he should, because it's a giant friggin' robot. But I really do like this figure. Um, the only thing that I'm kind of a little bit on the fence about is the price point of 50 bucks. Um, I do think that it's a, it's a little bit pricey. It's a little bit pricey. I would love to see something like this really go for more between the... Uh, 35 to 40 dollar range i think 50 is really hitting that peak right there so that only people who are really into whatever property or whatever character it is like me because i was a big fan of what if i would go out and buy something like this because i'm invested in it emotionally but for everyone else i would totally understand if you wanted to wait for a sale or get some kind of coupon or something like that because you know this really pushes the boundaries of what um, like a regular collector would go out just maybe if they just wanted to uh, get a Iron Man like figure in their collection. They're like, hey, the Hydra Stomper, that looks pretty cool, but 
oh, maybe I'll wait on that one. So we'll see what happens with those prices. Although I don't anticipate them going down anytime soon. In fact, I would actually say that uh, they're probably going to stay exactly where they are, if not go up a little bit more, you know, just because of everything that's going on right now. But as far as the figure itself, I like it. A little bit plain, but it's true to form. And like I said, if you want to do custom stuff on it, I think this is an excellent blank cam canvas to do it on. All right, guys, so that's it. I'm going to add this to the shelf that has all my other what if figures. And uh, I think it's going to look really good together. So thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Jeremy. We'll talk to you later.